All right, everyone, welcome back to episode 194 of the 580 Show. Myself, Dante, and the Shaw Classic lightweight winner, Alex Sokup. What's up, buddy? How you guys doing? Not bad. Sounded felt weird saying your name soak up for the first time ever. So <laughs> sorry if that sounded awkward, but man, just cut right to the chase. You won the first ever, you're the first ever winner of the Shaw Classic, you know, the in the new format, and you know, the first ever time they've done a lightweight class. So you did so pretty handedly. We'll talk about it a little bit, but how how are you feeling, you know, coming off or three days after your win? How are you feeling? Yeah, so I'm actually still sore. I wasn't too bad. Uh, third day, I was definitely starting to feel it, but I'd say now I feel it more than I did during the comp. But sometimes that's how it goes. You're just beat up from the aftermath of going through what you go through, you know, especially with multi-day comp. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've you've made the finals at OSG before, so it's you you've done the three-day comp before, which not a lot of athletes have. So I'm sure for guys that were in the finals against you for the first time, like they have never done OSG, it's probably really rough on them. They probably feel like they get back. Oh yeah. Now. Does it does there it feel the same as like that. does it feel the same as like OSG three day? Was there anything like like No, and I'll tell you why. So okay. at OSG and Josh, you've been there, right? Yeah. You've actually competed. I know yeah. uh Dante, you've been there too, just not yes. competed, right? No. Nope. Yeah. Boom. Roasted. Yeah. So week. the difference between <laughs> OSG and, and the Shaw Classic was OSG, you were there until like 11 p.m. some days. Yeah. Um, the latest we stayed at the Shaw Classic was, I think, around 2 p.m. It might have been 2.15. He was like on the dot with times. When it was supposed to be done, it was done on that time, at that time, and he made sure of it. So even though it was a three-day comp, you know, one of the days we were done at 11, like we were supposed to. And then two of them, I believe was around two o'clock. And so you still had, you know, half your day to go eat, recover, you know, stuff like that. And so it didn't feel as long, I guess. Yeah, that's as nice. Well. And I mean, I guess, I guess if you have strongest man on earth following, you know, you kind of have yeah. to be like that definitely helped. Cause it's like pretty much have a hard out for the pay-per-view, you know, watchers. So that right. helped. that's awesome that they stuck to it because I'm sure we've all seen it and people listening like itineraries and strongman usually don't go very well. They don't, <laughs> they don't get no. followed very well. Um, you know, so, well, that's cool. That answered one of my questions. What else? So you've been around the block. You've competed at like OSG regionals, OSG, obviously you're, you're very top 105 in the world. What well, were some, you. what were some differences versus like, in addition to itinerary and like following a schedule, what were some differences at the Shaw Classic that stuck out? Um, right off the top of my mind is what he does for the athletes. So um, all the athletes had access to a full recovery team um, that was paid for by Shaw. Um, and that included chiropractic, dry needling. Um, they had massage therapists, stuff like that. Um, and then they had, an ice bath team. So they had two ice baths and two hot tubs that athletes could use at any time they wanted to. Um, That's incredible. That was amazing. After every single day, you know, I would rotate between the hot and cold tubs and just started the recovery off right in the afternoon. So that was amazing. Um, he supplied snacks for all the athletes. So there was rice, Krispies, peanut butter, honey, Gatorade, um, and a few other snacks, like tables full of them for athletes to just use. And he had them available at all times, which was amazing. And That's then I would say um, another thing that he had is he pay, he fronted the photographers. So the photographers took pictures of everyone and within a day or two had pictures emailed to those athletes and we could download all the pictures we wanted at no cost. Shaw fronted all that. And these pictures are amazing. I don't know if you saw some of the ones mm -hmm. that I posted or other athletes. I mean, they are top-notch pictures, and all these athletes are getting them for free and to download them and stuff. And I thought that was just above and beyond. Things like that, just above and beyond um, what other shows have done. Yeah. And 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 also, um, I saw a lot of athletes posting your guys' like goodie bag, and you got, like, if people didn't see it, you guys got a full, like, legitimate athlete Back oh yeah it wasn't like one of those like 
duffel bag things you get mm -hmm. in like the Arnold, you know, a hundred million companies are handing those out. It was like an actual training backpack. Oh yeah. This, these backpacks, I mean, they're thick. The zippers on them are thick. They're very well made. We got uh, his shakers, I think are like 32 ounce shakers. So they're bigger than the average shakers. We got a banner, um, of course, our shirts. Um, we got a few other things. Uh, Fuzzies gave out some of their like drink holders. And then we got some like pre-workout from him, from Brian Shaw's company. Um, trying to think That's what incredible. else we got. Yeah. So stuff well, like that. Like, like it was. A yeah. It, it It's like um, when if. I don't know if you remember when the Shaw Classic like first announced like the lightweight class and like that they were doing like this open format this year for like everyone to sign up. One thing Shaw got a lot of heat for was the cost of entry, which, yeah. but it, it it seems like you guys got your money's worth in more. I mean, you know, every bit of it. Yeah, uh, I it, mean, like, I can't believe what he supplied for the cost of entry. That's incredible. I mean, that's so cool to hear. Like the food, uh, that's that's really cool. That's why, because we were just talking last week, like briefly on the pod about from a spectator standpoint, because we weren't there, you know, boots on the ground. So it's so cool to hear like from the athletes, because you like follow these Reddit pages and Facebook pages and people are talking shit. People are saying it's the best thing in the world. So it's so cool to hear from an athlete like that actually on the ground, your experience with it, you know, and how much that Shaw provided because – Oh, 100%. I, I, I was so like, even from, even from a spectator standpoint at home, it was so crazy for me to see like Shaw running around for the amateur. And I, I hate to say amateur, I guess just, I want I, like the Shaw classic. Cause you're definitely not an amateur. You're a professional. And a lot of people there were, but like he's running around as a scribe for like the open oh, yeah. in the morning. He's like, you could see just from the live stream, he's busting ass and stuff. So that was so cool. And then, when there were a couple of mistakes made or like mishaps, whatever you want to call them during like the strongest man on earth, or even with your guys show, who was the first guy to come out, literally address the crowd, like strongest man on earth on the paid pay-per-view. He's like for the actual screw up. For oh the yeah. Rest. He got on. He's like, this is unacceptable. This is, and he literally said, this is 100% my fault. And it probably, even though it probably even wasn't most his of the fault. time. It wasn't right. Yet he took the fall for it. But I mean, I guess like if you actually are like, at the end of the day, you know, he's the yeah. promoter, but a hundred percent, I know what you're saying. And it's yeah. like, dude, he got on that. I would be really curious to see the numbers for the live stream because I thought it like the pay-per-view um, live stream, but like, dude, he got on in front of everyone and said, this is a hundred percent my fault. And I thought that right. was so cool because I don't think a lot of promoters would do that and take all the blame. And like, right. I just, I was so impressed at home from of Brian. I think Brian could take over Strongman if he wanted to um very easily like after this weekend and it was just you know it's cool to hear that you had a very good experience as well like on you know there so yeah 100 i would definitely be going back i'll be that's, definitely going back that's awesome did you yeah. did you hear can we get an inside source from boots on the ground did you hear any rumblings about like next year what their plans are is it gonna be open registration is it you know what's the so that as far as we as far as I know, and as far as kind of the rumors, it's going to be somewhat similar to what it was this year. I think cool. this year was a trial run, and I think next year he might change a few things, but I can't see him doing a whole lot different. He loves the fact that there's qualifiers in person. He doesn't like these online qualifiers. Yeah. And, you know, not to – this is just from what, I, what I've heard and whatnot. I think he's going to keep – the qualifier, the the one day qualifier that leads into the finals. I think he's going to keep that format cool. or something similar. That's cool. And like selfishly, you know, I wish they would add like a lighter class. But but like I understand how it ran, and it was really cool to have four classes. And I thought like logistically it ran really well. And I think that was due to it not being like an over flooded show. Yeah. If that makes sense, you know, having. It was kind of did it feel weird being called a lightweight like all weekend like yeah <laughs> you know what i mean because like if you don't if you've never met alec like if you go into a room you know unless your brother's there or someone like that you're normally like the biggest guy in a room so it's so funny to hear you as like the lightweight you know so it's oh yeah it's just funny but i thought um so 
with the one day qualifier with being three events, did you feel that the best athletes, I mean, now you were in the zone and you were f obviously focused on yourself, but if you're going back and reflecting, do you think that was like appropriate and like the best athletes kind of found their way through regardless, like of the three events? Yes. The, I think there was a few athletes that are normally top 10 that didn't make it, but I think that was just mistakes on the day. And that is part of doing in-person qualifiers versus online yeah. is online. You can make a mistake and then redo it That's versus a in person. You make that mistake. There's 50 athletes that are going to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And so I know a couple guys and I don't know if you got you know a guy named Josh King. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think he holds like the world record in the one of fives for the deadlift. Yeah. On right max, but He's someone I could easily see in the top 10 of any competition and just a few mistakes cost it. And so for the most part, I would say that the 10 that made it were supposed to be there. Um, but you're going to have those occasional people yeah. that just make mistakes and there's it just happens. too many people there. It happens with four events. It happens with yeah. five events, like mistakes happen. And it, like, if you look at a show like OSG, there is always those people every year. They're like, wow, I can't believe they didn't make the finals too. So uh, you know, it happens. Like you said, people make mistakes and then other athletes capitalize on it. Yeah. I'm a big advocate for like the best people are going to find a way to have the best day and make it through no matter what. Like exactly. Even if you had three pretty bad events for you in the qualifier, I feel like you still would have found, you know what I mean? Like a hundred percent, you know? So, um, no, I was just curious because th this is the first time we've ever seen this type of format at a show. And I thought it was pretty cool. Like, Day one, yeah, it dragged it dragged a little bit, but the way that they did it logistically was so cool because strongest man on earth didn't start till the next day, right? Right. So you that allowed you guys. It was like, I mean, obviously he thought this out clearly in his team, but it's like duh. But you know, you guys had the whole day to get everyone qualified, and then the net the rest of the weekend there was only forty athletes total throughout the four classes for, you know, um. Um, for for the next two days, so you guys could compete in the morning, and then strongest man on earth, you know. Oh later, yeah. Right. So, yeah, that was cool. I was just curious, kind of your thoughts on on how that went. Um, what about judging? How did uh, judging has been like the hot topic coming out of the Shaw <laughs> Classic, and um, you were there. So, like, how did you feel as an athlete? I do think the judging was rightfully strict. Um, I will say that there was even times where I got reps that weren't counted. Um, but I do think at the end of the day, that was the right decision. And for them to stay that consistent, there was, I don't know if you guys saw or not, but when they chose the <laughs> lanes for everyone and whatnot, every single 105 that went got the same judge. I was just going to talk about that. So, that so we all had Jerry Pritchett and Jerry Pritchett did an amazing job of staying consistent. So on the reps that I didn't get, guess what? The next athlete that went had two or three of the same ones and he didn't count those. So exactly. the fact that everyone got the same judge for the show was absolutely amazing. And you really couldn't say like, oh, well, this athlete got a different, you know, judging versus this one well we all got the same we all have the same exact judge i love yeah him. well I that, that yeah that's that's such a good point that was one of my notes i had to bring up and i was talking with frawley about it at the gym we were watching you guys and he made that same point and i thought it was so i thought it was so brilliant because like yeah it's cool to go against guys in your class but every judge is a little bit different agree with it don't agree with it super strict not I, from home, I could tell they were being very strict and I would rather a very oh, strict yeah. show, especially if you're going to like have the title of strongest man on earth, earth or the, the Shaw classic champion, like you want to earn it. Right. And you want it to be strict, but you know, the other thing that I really enjoyed about, you know, your class only going one lane at a time is it was really cool for all the viewers because like my wife might be interested in watching like the lightweight women over here. And then like, I may want to watch you and then Frawley might want to watch the super heavyweight. You know what I mean? So it's like, it gave you a really good like palette to as like a viewer at all times. Cause there was four different yep. classes going all at the same time. So, um, 
that was another, I guess, pro from a viewership standpoint, but you make a great point because Jerry was, Jerry was strict. Oh but yeah. It was, but it was awesome. Like when I was watching on lanes, he was definitely the most strict judge. So I'm like, well, if you were in his lane and then a guy that was in second was in the lane, you know, and exactly. So, yeah, man, that's, that's, um, and there was events that obviously we went and competed against each other. And, you know, deep down, I love those, you know, that's the most fun. If you can do stones, parish, whatever event you're doing, and you can compete against someone that you're trying to fight for that position for, it does make it amazing. I mean, it makes it that much better. Um, but the events they had that for didn't require really judging. For example, power stairs. We went up against each other, but it didn't really require a judge to sit there and say, like, no rep or rep. Sure, you just, just get it to the top of the steps and push it all yeah, the way on. Yeah, right? exactly. So it's like, well, that's a great point, man. Yeah, that's cool. Power stairs end up being really cool. Were those <laughs> like, like those? Um, I I thought they looked awesome. It was so high off the ground. Like right. by the time you guys got up there, was that the most steps you've ever done in a power stairs, um, like event? Yeah. So most steps, also the hardest pins that I've ever used. Yeah, so you so you had the swinging ones, right? By the time you guys got up for, for two a of our two of the three were swinging, yeah. But what did those feel like? So the swinging ones have the handle. I don't know if you've ever picked up like a sixty-six pound squat bar. Yeah, yeah. kind of thick, but not as thick as an axle. Um, it was about that uh, thickness, and the actual implement that is attached to was like a rectangle box, right? Mm -hmm. But the box was longer, but it wasn't very wide. So it was very, very difficult to use your legs to push it onto the stair. Mm -hmm. It also had like a 20 plus inch pick height. So even though you're only putting it on a 15 inch stair, the height was so tall, it made it very, very difficult to swing those implements and get them yeah. up on the stair, especially the last one. Which is uh, funny because people was... think people think because it's a higher pick it's easier like a, like a deadlift, right? Not. But you can't generate as much power. Exactly. Like if you've ever used a really low pin for power stairs, it's so easy. Yeah. Because it's like you, you get, you're like upright rowing it basically. Yeah. You only have to pull it to your waist <laughs> and your legs do the rest of the work. That's a great point. But when that, these start already, crazy. you know, three quarters of the way up your thighs, you've got to pretty much shrug that thing. Yeah. Wow. Like shorter athletes in your class. Holy shit. Like a yeah. 20 inch pick height is. <laughs> I mean that's a that's a high pick for a power stair. That's interesting to hear. Um so how was the rest of the kid at the show? Like how was how was all this stuff? Because everything the looks so actual cool. implements. Yeah, everything looks so uniform. Like it, everything was rogue and bright and shiny and custom yeah. and the I think the farmers were really like eye catching one, right? Um cuz no one had ever seen those before. Right. How yeah, they were custom. Work? Yeah, they were custom for this show, and everyone was worried about them because they're long. They were afraid they were going to be kind of like a boat swing, uh, you know, because of how long they were. The handles to them had perfect knurling. They were well balanced. Can't really complain. I loved them. Yeah, yeah, they they look cool. How was everything else? Like, how did it? Uh, logs were all brand new. I've never pressed on a log with tape on it, mm. and when I got to it. The best way I can describe it was like having a grip shirt on. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. I was like, man, why don't more shows have tape on their logs? Like, I feel like it's cheating at this point. Like, yeah, it was so much easier to cling that log. Yeah. I think it's the only way that I got the 10 reps on the log, to be honest. Yeah, we were. That was that was the one event we were watching you live at the gym. Like we had a little a little uh, group watching it. And that was I think that was probably. I mean, you had a lot of great events over the weekend, but that one was like, because, you know, with the open signups, there was people struggling with that log. Yeah. And like you came out and you're hitting 10, you know, in a minute. And that was that. I think that shocked a lot of people to see. So that was, was that your best? Was that your most surprising event of the weekend? Like in your, open yeah, I would say so. Cause all, all training, the best I hit was nine. And that was with one rep being like, okay, it could count. It could not. Yeah. And so going there, me and several guys, um, Matt Quiston being one, and then uh, Jack Turner, we all thought that nine reps would win the event. Like that's the most you can get in 60 seconds, just like 
from a yeah, time just a lo- standpoint. Yeah, just logistically, like you only have 60 seconds and you're clean and pressing them, right? But the the tape at it, you know, I didn't fumble around and was able to just, my feet didn't move the whole time. And I think that's what helped it. And mm-hmm. having the tape, you know, the log didn't slip at all. And so it allowed me just to go rep after rep. And, you know, people come, you know, the bigger, bigger guys complain about the elevation and whatnot, but a lot of the one fives and even the women, like there might've been a little bit. And I think it may have caused just a little bit, but I, I don't think in the long scheme of things, it was like, it made that much of a difference, especially if for the fitter athletes, the one Oh fives and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. How was the, how was the venue? Cause it looked sweet. It, it was uh like a, what, like an 8,000 seat arena. I think that place actually holds. How was it like for, I mean, we talked about the athlete accommodate accommodations. Where did you guys warm up at? So we warmed up behind the curtain. So you see where all of the athletes come out of. Yeah. When they walked out onto the stage, just behind there, there was a warm up area. And then uh, you kind of just sat wherever you wanted to. They had chairs for everyone. You just pulled the chair into your group, kind of like what OSG does, um, yeah. just more room. That's cool. And there was more room. And then, um, yeah, it just allowed more space. It wasn't as clustered. It also helps the fact that there was only, you know, whatever, a hunt. 150 something like that athletes versus osg had yeah. like 400 yeah and and then by the end there's only 40 you got right you know, oh that like was eight, amazing eight, eight, yeah, yeah that had to have felt great then. um so when you you're going into the show like you just talked about like we thought nine reps was going to win our class when you were kind of like i imagine you game planned and like had a you know, I, Hey, I'm going to make the finals and this is how the events I think are going to go. Did you underperform on any events? Like, obviously you said you overperformed on the log you thought, and you know, explain that, but like, how did you do obviously one? So that's really all that matters, but in your mind, like, how did you do versus how you thought you were going to do? So on the, the, uh, qualifying events, uh, log went better than expected. Um, So I started the gate off really, really, really well. Um, Farmers being second, um, I really thought that I needed, basically, I thought I could get third in farmers. Now, not knowing really who I was going, how they were in farmers, also never picking up those implements. When I did the run, um, I knew of already two people Phil being one of them and then Matt being another that I needed to at least get close to or beat. Now on the second run, the 325 farmers, I dropped them. And in that moment, I thought I lost all points necessary in order to even be in the top five. So I would say beforehand, you know, I was expecting a certain number in the middle. I thought I lost everything. And then when I found out it was third, I was like, you know, obviously perfectly okay with that and more than yeah. happy. So that's great. Yeah. I was just curious because, because you were like, you were super, super well-rounded and, um, you know, I don't know what your overall placing was on every single event, but you were like extremely close to the top in almost every event. You know what I Lowest mean? Lowest I placed was third. So yes, the power stairs and the farmers I got in third. Um, and those were actually going into the event. Those were the, um events that i thought i was going to place the lowest on because i knew all of these events were pretty good for me yeah yeah because the the power stairs almost looked like you screwed up like watching but then other people you know it was just, it was just that hard and like you said there's a lot of things that go into it with that with that pretty rough setup and everything like that but no it was just it was so cool to see because his equipment looks so top-notch and everything from like just the presentation, the equipment, the the athlete care, whatever, it just seems so top notch. So it was really fun to watch. And it was probably the best stream I've ever seen for free on YouTube. Like I was gonna say that's another thing. Like everyone could watch it on YouTube, at least the open classes yeah. for free. And I think and that's probably genius on his part because people get hungry with the action. They're like, well, I want to go. I just watch Alec do this. Now I want to go see like half Thor and Mitch Hooper and these guys, right. they buy it funnels them into the live stream and the live stream didn't disappoint at all. But like 
for a free live stream on YouTube, I thought it was immaculate. To be honest, I'm, I'm gonna chime in. I have the stats up. Day one had over a hundred thousand views on YouTube. Holy yep. cow! Wow. Great <laughs> stat guy. Over a hundred thousand, and that and you, Dante, you know how that goes actually with um with like YouTube. Um, you know, you can obviously keep watching it. I guarantee that'll be at like a quarter million by the end of the year. Yeah, because it, it gets put into a lot of people's queues, like depending on what you watch. Mm -hmm. So it funnels a lot of viewers into it. So I mean, that's we're only three days after, and it's had a hundred thousand people watch. That's incredible. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think there was going to be that many. What about uh? The, do you have the other days up? Day two is at fifty three thousand, and day three is at forty nine thousand. Wow, that's pretty impressive, man. So we're over two hundred thousand views for the show, broken into three videos. I mean, that's crazy. That's cool. So you've had uh, you've had two hundred thousand people watch you <laughs> do, do uh, the Shaw Classic. That's awesome. Like, yeah, no, I, I'll be, I'll be very curious to see like where this show goes and what Brian's long term goals are because he seems like such a smart guy and I say that without knowing him or anything, but just the way he carries himself and like he he <laughs> thinks a lot of things through. You can tell yeah, even running can, the show, he's out there with the athletes. He is thinking everything through and like already probably thinking what he can do better on these certain events and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. You definitely can tell. And like the one the 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 MC asked him, he's like, are you gonna take a week off before you start planning 2025 and brian like he said yeah i'm gonna take a week off but like he even said it with like reluctantly in his voice like yeah. so i think he's already like planning 2025 <laughs> i'll be curious if like his goal is to kind of turn this into like an arnold almost like expo where everyone's coming to it and it's like but it's all instead arnold obviously was a bodybuilder and there's a lot to do with the arnold but like an arnold that is centralized around strongman which is like really cool being like if we had an actual expo every year that was for strongman. Right. Like, sure. Maybe other stuff will come on. Um, but like the main focus of it is getting like our community together, which I think would be really cool. You know, I am curious with the, the years upcoming, if, if more 90 kgs will even move up to try and just, I mean, it's a show open to pretty much all the weight class athletes. Yeah. Um, but it's also, I think more and more people will be open to doing this show. You know, there's some big names that couldn't make it. Brandon Burley ended up getting sick right before and couldn't make it out. Um, Derek had signed up. He's a 90 kg, but he didn't make it out. So I am curious to see if the show will continue to even in like get more people wanting to join in. I am curious to see if he's going to keep it at 50 or if he's going to have to open it up with the demand that's yeah yeah i heard, no, like I heard I, josh might want to do lightweight next year like, like i said i i wish it would had a like a lightweight in the terms of strongman but i get it the 105 class is the most prominent class besides super heavyweight like josh, I, cj made it to the finals I, I, no I dude <laughs> well we were just going to talk about he didn't just make it to the finals dude he made it he was in fourth mm -hmm. he was in fourth place yeah He's incredible. He is he's incredible. Like right now, uh, he's won the Chaos Classic. Obviously, the heaviest ninety kg show that they've ever had, and then he comes out. So I hope he's all right, like health wise, because he, he tweaked his back. He's had a when I saw him in uh, Baltimore about a month ago. He had he was talking to me about a little bit of a back injury he's had that he really wanted to get fixed after the Chaos Classic. Um, so I hope he gets healed up because. He's gonna be a tough dude to beat at OSG in the oh, 90 yeah. kg class because he's catching fire right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So what's next on on your radar? Is it OSG? Yeah, I'm gonna take uh, pretty much this week was just like I didn't even, I haven't even gone into the gym yet. I'll go in probably tomorrow. Um, just because I can't wait that long to go <laughs> back into the no, gym. I, but I get it. Uh, yeah, no, it'll be, I'll uh, have a rebuilding block probably for the next month. And then, you know, I'll, I'll start OSG prep probably 10 weeks out. So, yeah, no, you know what, you know what else I was thinking about too. You did your powerlifting meet not that long ago before. Yeah. So when, how, when was that powerlifting meet? Uh, powerlifting meet was in June. Okay. 
So yeah, you what had like a six week prep or eight week prep for the Shaw? Yeah, roughly. Yeah, because I I would say I started training the implements about eight weeks. Yeah, um, and then but I was still prepping for my powerlifting meet, and then when that ended in June, I had about six full weeks of hard prep going into the Shaw. Yeah, which I think sometimes people, I think that's a good example. But like, and like some people over prep i almost think i 100 like, percent agree more and i i think what's funny is that the more experienced lifters they actually kind of are like really confident in like that six week prep and mm -hmm. like more novices feel the need to do like a 14 to 16 where i feel like you're not even getting anything out of it and you could just get stronger right so and i think you when you have that long of a prep i think you can be prone to more injuries also oh for sure for sure I think eight to 10 weeks is, is my sweet spot yeah. is where I like to, if I can have eight to 10 weeks, that'd be ideal for every prep. So yeah, I think after that, I'd start running into possibly getting hurt or getting hurt. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's so hard because strongman is just, it can specific events can be so physically taxing. Right. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, sometimes you, you know, you might need to dial back, but you just don't, you know, it's, it's like, it's right. really hard with event training. Some are, you can do a lot sandbag toss or you can probably do that almost every day, but the other stuff is, is hard. So that's cool to hear from you that you won the Shaw classic off a six week prep. I'm going to use that as, a yeah, I mean, I can't really say that was like, I mean, ideally I was in the best shape going into the Shaw classic. So the amount of time that I got you know, I got the best that I would have gotten well, even with a longer prep. So it's yeah. not an excuse or anything like that. No, no. I just think it's cool. I, cause I know what was your official diagnosis at OSG last year with your back? Was it a lat tear? It, so it wasn't my back. He, they, yeah. Okay. Um, it was my stomach. I, oh, I tore really? a hole in my left side of my stomach. Yeah. Oh, yes. So what's that? What, what does the doctor say? Uh, uh, it was a, um, oh my goodness. I just forgot. Uh, it's a like abdominal tear. Uh, yeah, it's right next to your abdominal, so it's on the uh, left uh, side, kind of. Um, your oblique tear. Oblique. There you go. <laughs> Dude, I do that sometimes too. Like, hey, yeah, it's like right on the tip of your tongue. But yeah, so oh, so it ended up being an it, oblique tear. Yeah, it took him like ten seconds. I went into the doctor's office. He felt around. He's like, "Yeah, you have a hole right in your oblique. You have a full oblique tear." What was uh? What was the rehab for that like? Uh, so it actually hurt worse than it actually does damage to your body. So the pain is greater than the actual damage caused. Um, I would say within four weeks of doing physical therapy, I was back to being able to like use my stomach and whatnot and actually start lifting again into like, you know, start on a two, three plate deadlift, stuff like that. So yeah, really compared to my other injuries, it wasn't that bad, but it hurt worse than any of my other injuries if that really makes sense. that's crazy it's so funny that and, and i i think i'm right with this but you tore your oblique and then you won the stones mm -hmm. after at osg right i got second i was the first one to finish the stones oh, in history. that was it first one to and finish. then and then lee had to go and beat me gotcha gotcha yeah i i knew it was something like that but that's still so you're the first one to finish the stones and got second place in the finals at osg with a torn oblique so that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. So I'm excited to see how you, how do you feel about the OSG events they've announced so far? The two. Events. So the events so far are great. The ones that are rumored about, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. 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 It'll be, it'll be fun to see. I'll be excited to see you go in on a full, like fully healthy. And you know, you've got what, four months almost till OSG. Yeah. So that'll be awesome, man. But, uh, I'm excited. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, there's times where obviously I think my weakest point is just having like the confidence in myself. Um, but after these last few competitions, like I really think that podium isn't, isn't, uh, isn't too far out of reach. I think. No, I, I would say the top isn't too far at all for reach for you for sure. But it's so crazy to hear that from like someone like yourself. Cause everyone has those kind of like, it's crazy, you know, it's just yeah. psychologically, but um but yeah, man, that's awesome. We'll be rooting for you at uh, at OSG as well. Um, is there anything else from the show that um, you feel is like important to bring up or anything like that? I mean, you answered all my questions, but uh, was there anything that like stuck out to you? Anything 
Um, I would you know, say um, uh, this isn't really a topic that's talked a whole lot about, but I know shows that are paid, the top three gets paid. Um, some, you know, take a while, some, you know, do a well, a good job. I would say that even from the end of the show, they were reaching out and making sure that we were going to fill out the forms needed to get paid. So that's cool. they're already on top of it. You know, email of a question and it's within that day it's answered back. So they're very on top of and wanting to get the athletes that are supposed to get paid, paid. So okay. I think from that standpoint, it's, that's another, you know, huge, huge pro on there. Wow. That's impressive. So, um, so the Shaw classic was paid. Yeah, the top three athletes. Um, That's incredible. That's so. Cool. They have an estimated amount. They haven't told us exactly what it is yet, but oh, that's awesome. So yeah, I'm sure they base it off you know a bunch of stuff, which is cool. I actually, I actually prefer that because it's like, I think sometimes when people run into payment issues, they make like a false promise because they look at like, oh, we're ex we're we're expecting or projecting this many buys because some right. dork tells them hey twenty thousand people are going to buy this and it's just not true you know right. so that's really cool to hear that's awesome so that's a good note to end it on that shot i mean it seems like he knocked this out of the park absolutely i don't i think he's just gonna get it's just gonna get better oh, next that's year cool, so man. well alec alec soak up thank you for joining Sorry to say your Absolutely. name Walker, again. It feels weird to say your name like that, but uh, <laughs> I'll greet you with it next week when I see you. But man, congratulations on the win. Seriously. Um, Dante will have Alex. If you're watching on YouTube, um, Alex name is up on the box on Instagram. Make sure you guys are following him. He's awesome. He's one of the craziest competitors you can watch. So it's really, it's, it's, it's just an awesome follow. And he's a great person, which makes it awesome as well. That. And then I'll just I'll just say it for people that aren't watching on YouTube. I believe it's just Alex. I believe it's just your name, right? Yeah. Alec. A L A L E C S O U K U P. That's just it. on Instagram. Awesome, yeah. man. Well, thank you so much for joining the show. Yeah, Make sure you guys follow and and uh and uh and uh thank you guys and give him a follow. See you guys. Peace. Thank you.